This is the simplest and easiest way for you to increase your cardio for wrestling. Let's discuss. What's going on guys? My name is Josh Setledge. I am the BJJ strength coach. I'm also a wrestling coach, but I just never use that hashtag. As you can see, I got my Iowa Hawkeye shirt, so you know I'm all about uh, that wrestling life. You know what I'm saying? Before we get into that, I want to invite you guys to sign up for my free four-week strength program. At the time that I'm filming this video, it's the off-season for a lot of you wrestlers, and I'm sure a lot of you guys understand and recognize that you need to get stronger in this off-season so you can start winning more matches and getting injured less but maybe you don't know where to start. Maybe you don't have a training program and maybe you're going to the gym kind of thinking like, I have no idea what to do. I don't know what workouts are actually gonna help me with wrestling. I've already made a program for you guys. It's four weeks long, two days a week. If you're interested in that training program, just click the link below. I'll send it to you for free. You should get uh, delivered directly to your inbox and I'll be able to help you guys out. This is the simplest and easiest method for you to increase your cardio for wrestling. We've all been there. Let me know if this sounds familiar because I know I've been there. It's late in the second period and you are just dog tired. You feel like your legs, your arms, and your lungs are all shot. You get the decision going into the third period. You pick top so you can kind of chill a little bit and rack up some writing time, but your opponent is an absolute killer and he escapes and ties up the match. And now it's like, oh geez, I gotta figure out this takedown so I can win, but there's one problem you're shot you have no gas left in the tank and you feel absolutely exhausted and burnt out you're trying to scramble so you, you don't give up the takedown but you're so tired that you can't sprawl hard enough you can't scramble hard enough or fast enough he ends up taking you down you lose the match you walk out of the auditorium try not to make eye contact with your teammates because i know you just got you know your butt hand to you and uh, you were doing really well but then you crashed and burned isn't that the worst feeling? I know I've been there way more than I'd like to admit. I'm sure some of you guys have been there as well. So what's the issue here? You didn't have enough cardio for you to push those later rounds and those later periods in the wrestling match. Now I know what you're thinking like, but coach, like, can I just go on long runs? Isn't that going to be the best thing for me to increase my cardio? No, no. Going on long runs has got to be one of the most ridiculous things that I've heard wrestlers do in attempt to get better conditioning and get better cardio for wrestling. Here's the deal. You do so much wrestling in season and in the preseason that you don't need to go on any long runs. Long runs are great for increasing your, your base level of aerobic conditioning or aerobic endurance. But when you're wrestling two hours a day, five days a week, every week, month after month after month when you're in wrestling season, you already have a solid aerobic base of condition. You don't need to work on that anymore. What you need to work on is two things, repeated sprint ability and increasing your blood lactate threshold. Let's talk about repeated sprint ability. What is repeated sprint ability? Repeated sprint ability is your ability to push a really hard max maximum effort pace on any sort of drill, any sort of scramble, any sort of position in wrestling, be able to quickly recover and then hit that again without burning, crashing and burning. So think about just constantly sprint after sprint after sprint after sprint and being able to recover really fast. It's one thing to sprint in the middle of a match and you know, you're pushing that pace hard in that first period, but if you can't recover in about 10 to 30 seconds, it doesn't matter how fast you went that first time because you're not going very fast at all after that. That's why it's important to have a lot of really good repeated sprint ability. Now, the next thing we need to look at is blood lactate threshold. That's a lot of fancy terms that I'm throwing at you. But basically, blood lactate threshold is your ability to sustain a really high pace in a wrestling match without crashing and burning or hitting that red line. The faster pace that you can push for a longer periods of time without getting tired, you are gonna win so many matches by dragging your opponents into that deep water. It's gonna, by the time that your opponents hit that red line, it's gonna feel like you're not even that tired. You're still able to work and move at a really fast pace without getting tired, without burning out, without hitting that red line. It just freaking sucks. So here are two things that you can start doing to improve your repeated sprint ability and increase your blood lactate threshold. The first one is gonna be hill sprints. And you're probably thinking like, Coach Jay, I thought you said you hated running and running was whack. Long, slow runs, 
I do hate those. I don't ever want to do them. I never do them, to be honest. And yes, I do think they're whack when it comes to preseason and in-season conditioning. The biggest bang for your buck is gonna be doing hill sprints. Sprinting up a hill is gonna work wonders for your cardio and increasing your repeated sprint ability. How you can do this is you're gonna do this one to two times per week. You're gonna do 10 sets total. And you know, depending on what hill you're sprinting up, that's gonna determine how long it's gonna take to sprint up that hill. But you're gonna sprint, you're gonna do a nice good warm up. You're gonna take a couple warm up sets running up the hill. But then when you're ready to hit that first set, this is what you're gonna do you're gonna sprint as hard as you can and as fast as you can up that hill. And you're gonna mark your time. That time, say it takes you 30 seconds to sprint up that hill, that time is your cutoff point. You cannot do any more sprints that are five seconds longer than that initial time. So if your first time was 30 seconds, your cutoff time is gonna be 35 seconds. All of your sprints need to be 35 seconds or under. If you go over that, you either need to increase your rest periods or just call it for the workout. And this is how we train repeated sprint ability, training your body to adapt to sprinting at a really hard pace and teaching it to bring the heart rate back down, get your breathing back under control, recover quickly so that you can sprint at a maximum effort again. Try, try to have your goal starting out be 10 rounds. If you can't make it through all 10 rounds, that's fine. Every week or every workout, just do the best to add at least one more rep or one more round to those hill sprints. That's gonna be the workout that you're gonna do to improve your repeated sprint ability. Next, we're gonna talk about blood lactate threshold. It's gonna be very similar and you can do this up a hill, but you can do this, it doesn't need to be on a hill. It can be on a rowing machine, it can be on a assault bike where you have the handles and the feet moving at the same time. It could be on a regular exercise bike, but this is gonna help increase your blood lactate threshold. You're gonna sprint every minute on the minute for about 10 minutes. You can progress this and add minutes to this workout as you get better at it, but just to start, just focus on the initial 10 minutes. What you're gonna do is you're gonna sprint. You're gonna run down and back, whether it's a football field, whether it's a soccer field, and when you're gonna start a new sprint at the top of every minute. So time starts, boom, down and back. However fast you come back, you just get to rest until the next minute starts, and then you're gonna sprint again and then rest until the next minute starts. And then you're gonna sprint again. And the first few rounds may seem pretty easy, but trust me, during those later rounds, you are really gonna be looking at the clock and thinking like, I do not have enough time to rest. And, but you have to get back in time before the next round starts. And that is gonna increase your ability to push that pace when you're tired, to elevate the work that you're doing when you're tired and when you're starting to feel fatigued. The more you can get comfortable with that, the more you're able to increase your blood lactate threshold so that you can do more work in less time without getting as tired and be able to drag your opponents into deep water. Having a high blood lactate threshold is crucial for being successful in wrestling, in any wrestling match, whether it's freestyle, Greco, or collegiate wrestling, does not matter. Everyone that is a great wrestler has a great blood lactate threshold. Hit some of these workouts and give it a try. I would suggest picking one of these workouts to do uh, twice a week, depending on what you wanna focus on. Focus on those things for about three weeks and then maybe rotate in a different workout after that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like to comment and subscribe. You know, I love what I do being a strength, strength and conditioning coach for wrestlers. And my dream is to spread this information out to as many wrestlers as possible and to help as many wrestlers as possible. So you guys can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Joshua Setledge. If you're interested in that free four week strength program, just click the link below. I'll send that directly to your inbox and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.